You know, what you'll see today is kind of a different perspective. You know, when I started the Yale Entrepreneur Council, I had one focus in mind, and that was to provide the experience, provide the education that I did not receive when I started my business and failed to the point where I nearly bankrupted myself in my early 20s. And so if the data you're going to see is it's very much in your face. We polled 1,600 young people uh, out of a poll of, of 9,000, 1,600 with Buzz Marketing Group uh, in sponsorship with LegalZoom to really find out what youth unemployment and young entrepreneurship look like right now and how that is beginning to create a whole new set of businesses that people don't know about, opportunities that need to be acted on, and basically something at the end of the day that I believe is a real interesting paradigm shift, and this is the proof in the pudding. As you can see, like I said, we have a pretty even split. Just so everybody knows, I'm going to give you an email address. It's Scott with two T's at askgerber.com, A-S-K-G-E-R-B-E-R. -E -E this is an abridged version of our survey, but I'll happily email you the full results uh, if you shoot me an email. We start with education. We pulled our research, we pulled our folks, and we asked them, have you ever been offered entrepreneurship classes? And we were blown away uh, by the fact that literally 73% of students in this country are not offered any level of entrepreneurship education. But what's more shocking was the next question, is that if they did receive entrepreneurship education, what was the effect of entrepreneurship education on their ability to build a business? And as you can see, it was overwhelmingly negative. Now this is the people who we are educating. This is the people we need to help. These are those folks. And yet, clearly, there is a need to serve them in a whole new way. Additional to that, we asked them about the importance of entrepreneurship education. You know, what blows my mind is, I, you know, I take a lot of heat sometimes in the press because a lot of people consider me a big contrarian because my approach to entrepreneurship is I do believe you can teach entrepreneurship in many ways. I do believe that youth unemployment right now is the key driver of new business growth in the youth sector because we're out of necessity and desperation needing to do something. But there is nothing allowing these young people to transcend the traditional education system because there's no other organization that identifies with them appropriately. And this is, again, proof in the pudding that such an overwhelming number want this, but yet in the mass, there's truly almost nothing. You folks in this room are really inspiring in the fact that I love to see so many people wanting to do something, so many people that are doing something, but clearly this is a message that needs to leave this room and go all across the United States and beyond. We next ask people about employment. Uh, we were shocked to find, these are some of the more startling survey results that I personally found. Um, the first thing was about support systems. Support systems are identified to us in the comments that we receive from our folks as families helping young people to become entrepreneurial, as educational systems around them, mentorship, and so on and so forth. And we found, again, overwhelmingly negative that so many young people don't feel they are being supported at key developmental stages of their entrepreneurial growth. Another key factor that we feel through the peer-to-peer -peer mentorship programs we are going to produce, this can be slightly alleviated, especially with the help of folks like yourselves. Financial institutions, no big secret. As you'll see, uh, the, some of the numbers are quite polarizing. Um, I should mention that a lot of the 63% of our respondents are college graduates, um, to give you just a sense also, just for backstory. Um, but with employment, we found Again, the banks overwhelmingly negative. On government, you're also obviously going to find a very polarizing number, but we think that's a perception issue. When you look at right now, uh, why I look people like Dave Cohen, who I just met today for the first time in tech stars, too many people are talking about, let's educate our kids. But what they're not talking about is let's make their education practical in the environment where they are, in a, in a sense, not in the real world, and allow them to build something while they can build it without the fears of the outside world in many respects. Building on-premise college startups. And again, what we found is that that number is actually quite encouraging. 13%, we actually, uh, the survey company that did this, Buzz Marketing Group, which does youth marketing across the boards, did not expect this number to go anywhere above 6%. And I was quite shocked about that, that, that particular statistic. And there, as you can tell, there's clearly a lot of room for growth. Did you start a business as a result of being unemployed? This is my favorite statistic. Again, I created the Young Entrepreneur Council because I wanted a resource that I didn't have. I am your target. I am not a multimillionaire, although a lot of the folks on the council are. I am the average 99%. I am the person that's going to open a dry cleaning store. I'm the person that's going to go to my community and one day help the Chamber of Commerce. I am not the individual that is the Facebook high tech, and guess what? That's 99% of us. And you cannot forget about those entrepreneurs. Right here, this is it. 21% of young people polled are creating a job to keep a job. That is startling. 
And that is something that we need to instill in our young people, especially because they feel entitled and they've been coddled for too long and have no real sense of reality. This is the reality. They need to move forward. This is the one that I know the government folks are going to be like, I actually, and as the polling company believe, that even though this number is so high, it's a perception issue. It's not a lack of resources issue. I had great conversations with the folks at the SBA a few weeks ago, and there are tons of resources, obviously SCORE and a variety of others, that really do help this niche in a million and one ways. The problem is the niche has no idea they exist. They don't know how to communicate with your platforms. They don't understand what it is you provide them because they can't find it. They're not told what to look for. And most of it is not geared for them. But let's not forget that. Entrepreneurship education is a very, very big term. But at the end of the day, a college kid's version of that education and how we speak to ourselves versus the way you all speak to us is a different language entirely. Which is why with the Young Entrepreneur Council, we strive to create that educational dialogue from a peer-to-peer -peer perspective. And that is a much different way in which we are educating within rather than educating from, you know, from out looking in. The healthcare stuff I'm just going to kind of skip over, but the general sense is one of the biggest things we notice of why young people don't jump into entrepreneurial ventures is healthcare. Um, obviously, I'm not going to get political and talk about healthcare and all that stuff. It's not this forum. But I will say that what one of the mentor, uh, rather one of the programs we're working on right now, uh, and major efforts are underway to provide cost-effective healthcare for young business owners who want to en masse join the entrepreneurial ranks. So providing them that level of resource, that's something we're working on with private companies right now to create that program. As you can tell, again, there's a lot of different needs, a lot of different price points. Uh, this is all stuff that I'm happy to explain in another forum, but I think that there's better data for you guys to see. This is another. What's holding us back? Why are we not going into those ranks? Even when unemployment has taken 20 plus percent of us out of the workforce, where the marginally attached numbers are never reported about youth, and we're always told, well, you know, it's, it's, they're disillusioned. They thought they were going to go into a world and that their, their diploma was going to set the way. This is, these are the actual realities of why. The not interested, of course, you're always going to have folks that don't want to be entrepreneurial, no question. But the ones that really, again, are startling is that 52% of people think there are not enough resources. Again, these are the people we are supporting. If it's a perception issue, if it's lack of product, lack of service, whatever it is, this is the reason that our organization exists. We want to provide those resources. And we want to help you all to provide those resources because we understand what we need. We are the people that are receiving them. And too many times the conversations don't happen where the folks that really do want to provide the help try to provide it in a way that they think is right. And I'm not here to tell you what you're doing is wrong, obviously. You know, I'll let you, you, know, you decide for yourself what is the value of this data for you to go back and figure out your programs. But what I will say is bring us into the dialogue. Have us, the young people, the amazing young talents, I've met many of them this weekend and that are all joining my council, right guys? Um, have them help you. Have them guide you. Have them tell you what works. Because we know what doesn't work. We've been doing it for too long. These are the kinds of businesses that the average 99% are. And this is another big statistic. Side businesses, sidepreneurism is growing at a rapid rate. Too many jobs are paying wages that frankly cannot support a young person's ability to sustain themselves. This is not simply just that 20%. This is many others. So what this basically says is not only is it important to just, hey, I'm going to be an entrepreneur, I'm starting my business, but rather, out of necessity because I even have a job, I need to find a way to start a business. 35% of young people, this is startling data, 35% of young people seriously told us that they started a side business in the last year just because the economy has tanked in such a degree and they're the biggest, uh, they are the biggest losers in many ways in that scenario. This is another one. You plan to quit your job. A lot of young people feel disillusioned. And I won't get into what I personally do. I believe a lot of young people simply, and it's, it's weird saying it from this end. I know a lot of you folks would say this. I believe we are the most spoiled, entitled, coddled, or, you know, group of individuals in the world. We think that our uh, poop doesn't stink. I apologize for the reference. But the bottom line is, there's a reason for that. We were coddled for too long. We were told what worked. We were told we were going to reach for the stars and all this nonsense. That once the teetering pedestal collapsed, we finally said, well, Okay, now what? I'm supposed to leave college with my BS and BS, and that's going to be what's going to guide me in the next direction. But now they got into the workforce, realized it wasn't the dream job they were promised in their minds, and now they have to find ways out. And this is just showing you once again why it's so important to provide this education at key developmental moments. So just kind of in closing, 
And this is the last stat I want to bring up. Do you want to work for an entrepreneur? Entrepreneurship is very interesting to me for one reason. How do you meet amazing people? I love it. I love what I am doing. I, this whole thing, going back to the New York Times, started because all I wanted to do was stop hearing in the news that youth unemployment was this global crisis and have somebody start a conversation about what we could do about it. Stop saying all this high in government funding and all different things that were, you know, all palpable long term solutions. But what are we doing now? What is the action taken today? Not six months from now, not six years from now, today. And that's why I wanted to put together the world's greatest minds in our generation to teach. What we, what we know, what we've learned, most importantly in the relation, uh, in, in the communication platform we know, in the way we speak to one another, with the message that we understand, with all the different things that at the end of the day, we know work, because we've done them. We failed the same way they did. We'll stop them from making the mistakes of Kylo and Tom and all these other things. So the closing thing I say this to you guys, and, and I really appreciate the time, I apologize I'm going about 10 seconds over here. The last thing I would just say is this. In the effort to go into high group entrepreneurship, do not forget the little guy. We cannot put job creation at the forefront by losing America's leaders today. I am happy to work with all of you, with the government, to help you all repackage and reprocess what you do so that we understand it, work with the nonprofits to be able to help them allocate resources, bring in the top young people from around the world to teach you what works for us. That is my commitment to all of you. I hope you will. Uh, Check out the Young Entrepreneur Council. We're launching with 500 young entrepreneurs from the United States in April on our large new young entrepreneur council.com platform. All this peer to peer education and multimedia content. Love to speak to all of you. Find out how we can partner. Thank you for the opportunity. Have a great day.